Good people, I'm Dimitri from Hardware Canucks. Traveled half across the world to do this video for you. Shooting from uh, Eber Studio and Robert, good luck with editing this one. On the review table today is the new Corsair HS lineup. And the reason why I want to include all three headsets is because whatever Corsair is doing, please don't stop. They've updated the lower tier HS series, the HS55 stereo and the HS65 surround. And we also have a new HS80 version that's no longer the wireless one, but takes up all the good things from the wireless version, which you can check out my review over here and makes it wired with a USB connection. So let's start with the Corsair HS55 stereo. I think this is the most exciting one in the $59 space because they've updated the, the comfort, the build quality, the microphone, the cable, and everything is there and it all kind of makes sense. Nothing feels like a compromise. It's a super lightweight headset. You know, it is plastic, but nothing is creaking. Side extensions work very well. And the rotation cups to go flat on your neck, which is the proper way instead of them facing you is nice. So you can rotate your neck and it's not choking you. So all that is very well taken care of. The headband uh, is plastic, but the amount of padding on it is great. Same thing with the ear pad padding, the interior lining on the ear cup. It doesn't have much thickness, but it is a nice material. So if you do make contact with your interior uh, and the ears, it won't be that uncomfortable. And this over the HS50 series, the previous one, I mean, I will take the HS55 any day of the week. They work very well with glasses, as you can see, both from a uh, cushion perspective, it's deep enough, and also from the angle of the ear cup. And for the $59 price territory, this feels way above its class when they're on your head. Control wise, this thing only has a volume wheel on the left ear cup that has beautiful density with both hard stops on maximum and minimum. Minimum fully completely mutes the audio instead of like having a tiny bit of audio passing through on some other headsets. And it's very easy to find the cable here. So this is another major positive point for Corsair. This cable is very rubberized. It doesn't kink and the most important thing is it does not actually send any cable noise into the ear cup. So it could be brushing against your shirt. I don't hear any of that coming through the ear cup. That is a massive positive point, again, for this $59 price territory. Cable length is perfectly fine. And we have a splitter cable included in case you wanna run this into dedicated headphone and microphone jacks. The only two compromises with the stereo is the side texture. It gets way too gunky. It's already way too scratched up in this uh, circular pattern. And the microphone, despite it sounding amazing, it has a very weak tactile bump when it's muted in the upright position. And there is very little consistency between this and the HS65 surround, which has the same microphone mechanism, but on that pair, it's a lot more evident. Which is a perfect segue into the HS65 surround. So this thing for $79 is also very impressive with slight modifications to the frame to make it you know, a little bit more premium and I'll go over some of those changes. So first of all, the frame is slightly different. We have an additional piece over here that makes the ear cup have a bit more play. Therefore, it can contour to your head, but otherwise it basically feels identical on your head. We also have a different texture on the surface material that touches your head. Here, it's no longer full pleather. It has that slightly more breathable bathing suit material, but much softer. Uh, so in terms of sweat accumulation and having more breathable, you know, texture on your, uh, on your, on the contact point is better with the HS65 surround. And we also have this pretty grill on the side that uh, won't get gunky over time. And overall, color wise, the HS65 surround is more carbon gray instead of being pure black. These headsets are also available in white, which is awesome. So many gaming peripherals are now available in white and Corsair being on that bandwagon is excellent. They work very well with glasses, just like the HS65 surround, and it has a much stronger tactile bump for the mic mute and a different color on the end tip of the microphone capsule. Again, just uh, very minor visual differences. And the biggest difference here would be the included USB dongle. So this thing is awesome if you want to bypass some notebook audio and if you want to just plug this in and experience really good uh, power from a USB surround sound. So this thing has what they call sound ID technology, which is at first I was like, nah, I don't want to play around with it, but it's actually pretty innovative. So the way it works is it plays this A-B sound testing and you select which one sounds best to you. And after you complete this test, it creates this personalized sound profile, depending on what type of music you like, what type of genre you like the best. And for me, 
I love what it created in terms of the, the personalized sound and it sounds much better versus when it is off. And you can also select different categories. So if you like to, you listen to electronic music, you can kind of create the sound ID based on that. If you like to do more rock, it will play those sound samples. And it's a very intuitive way to create this like custom EQ without actually touching the EQ setting. Also the cable is that beautiful rubberized that sends zero cable noise into your ear cup and the volume wheel on the right side. This one is not as dense, still has hard stops, but uh, again, shows you a little bit of that inconsistency in quality control. But overall, I would say it's passable. And the last new pair in the HS series is the HS80 RGB USB. So in terms of the design, it's identical to the HS80 wireless, uh, but now with a cable. It is a USB cable, same beautiful rubber that, that has very little cable noise that sends into the ear cup. I love that. I don't particularly care about the RGB on the sides, but since it's running off a USB, you don't need to worry about battery life, so that's great. And this is probably my new favorite material on any gaming headset in terms of the ear cups. It has that plushy material that doesn't accumulate sweat. It's kind of semi-open, but also has a really nice seal. The interior lining is slightly thicker too, so a bit more premium for the $99 price point in case your ears do make contact with that inside wall. It's not gonna be unpleasant. This thing works very well with glasses. Clamping force is fine. It has that self-adjusting headband that you can tighten or release if you need a little bit extra space. And of course, they fold on your neck the proper way so you can maneuver and just have this thing on your neck without needing to take them off. I find that the big positive. Controls are simple here. We have a digital volume wheel at the back that's very easy to find and uh, a button for IQ macro customization that you can custom, like let's say, change EQ profiles, change modes, whatever, or by default, it's a mic mute. But I would say just reprogram it to something else because mic mute is also available in the upright position as it should. And the tactile bump here is in a different position like uh, versus the HS50 series and the 60 series, but it's still uh, audible. And we have a red LED on the microphone when it's muted. You can also reprogram this button to let's say launch an application. Steam, for example, you know, put this on, boom, you're ready to game. The all new G360A by Fantex, bringing updated design inside and out to refresh the P360A chassis with a legendary breathable, durable mesh front panel for improved cooling and that awesome illumination peeking through via the three DRGB front fans. The interior is now made to accommodate 360mm radiators at the front and top, longer GPU support and user-friendly assembly. The dual color options are great for an all-white build with complementing cooler, fans and PSU, so check out the new Fantex G360 68 cases down below. Now you've heard all about the features, let's talk microphone quality. And it is wow impressive. Whatever Corsair is doing, please do not stop. These microphones sound amazing. I mean, the Corsair HS80 wireless proved to be an amazing uh, wireless microphone. And this thing to my ears is even better in terms of vocal clarity, in terms of warmth, it doesn't sound tinny. And uh, you can adjust the mic boost in the IQ software. Plus you can adjust the microphone volume as well, just in case you want to have a little bit of that extra reach. I do appreciate the zero latency microphone side tone. So if you like to hear yourself slightly, you can enable side tone. You can also adjust the volume of the side tone on this headset. And that's awesome because I can hear myself. I can hear what's been said. And of course I can mute the microphone with this up. Next up, we have the Corsair HS65 surround plugged into its own USB dongle. And I made sure to adjust the volume of the microphone to boost at three dBA uh, because otherwise it's a little bit too quiet. But again, fantastic uh, vocal clarity, not as good as the HS80 RGB USB, but still very decent. My only complaint here is that if I start to type, it doesn't have much in terms of uh, noise suppression of the background. So for example, if you are using this type and uh, you want to have the best clarity on the vocals, all the stuff that you are doing in your surroundings will be picked up. And lastly, we have the HS55 stereo. This is going to my Sound Blaster X G6 sound card. Uh, I think it's a really nice like portable solution. So that's why I'm using it uh, here. We have slightly more background compression, which, which is a little surprising to me in terms of like what you know, how much uh, it compresses the background elements, but it still sounds nice and warm. 
and uh, a very, very acceptable microphone in this price class. And just for reference, here's my daily driver gaming headset, the H6 Pro from Epos. I love this microphone, it's a staple. Uh, and between all the other microphones that you heard today, which one sound best to your ears? Let me know in the comments. And just for a little reference, here's what the sound compression sounds like uh, on the H6 Pro in terms of isolating keyboard strokes and mouse clicks as well. And we now finally have a construction that is beginning to sound very loud in the background. Ready? Yeah, ready. Okay. Boom. There we go. All right. Okay. Has a good seal around my ear, which is good. Oh, these, these cables are so good. I, it's wow. What about this one? This is, this is built better than the other one. Ooh. Oh yeah. I, I actually like this. This is really nice. Yeah. Good seal in my ears. My, my ears don't make contact with the inner wall. This is like 30 or 40% built better than the other one. Oh, I like the ear pads. Ear pads. They're really good. Wow, it's so comfortable. Yeah, this is great, man. 99 bucks? I mean, come on. Yeah, you're, you're getting what you're paying for. Well, I probably get the, the more expensive $99 version. The comfort is much better. Uh, and if I'm using this for long-term use, I, I, this, is, this is something that I would get. But HSC 5 that would be my like my first pick because it's built better than the cheaper one, the $59 pair. All right, there you go. thanks, Eber. <laughs> Take it back. In terms of audio performance between the 55 and the 65, so they have the exact same drivers, exact same sensitivity in terms of power output, but the biggest advantage with the HS65 surround would be the USB dongle. If you want to bypass crappy laptop audio, crap top motherboard audio, the USB stick gives you access to EQ, it gives you access to sound ID, which I think is a huge benefit here. And it also has the big advantage with uh, side tone being able to enable it so you can hear what you're saying, which I love. I not, I hate not being able to hear myself in the microphone. And you can also adjust the volume of the side tone, which is also instantaneous. There's no delay. So that's pretty awesome. But in terms of sound, it's clear, powerful, and not muddy. It's not bloated. I feel like they uh, tune them you know, just perfectly right for the $59-$79 territory. It's not gonna disappoint you. It's not gonna blow your socks off. It's not gonna be level of something of a $200 headset, but I think it's totally satisfactory for all the games that I've been playing lately. So that includes Escape from Tarkov, all the audio keys in, in CSGO, I've been playing Dune as well, which is fantastic. Little, you're hearing little cues when the warm comes. It just like, it's a bit powerful, you know, nice, powerful on the low end. It's not sharp and it's detailed enough. So if you already have a pretty decent DAC amp, you don't care about EQ customization, you don't care about like tweaking around with the sound ID, then the HS55 stereo. You save it 20 bucks and it's a very solid option for this price point. And Dolby is not enabled in the Windows settings. You have to enable Dolby Audio in IQ. So in previous Corsair headsets, you plug in the USB dongle and Dolby Audio app on Windows would recognize that they're working together with IQ and you're able to do that through Dolby Audio application separately, but now you can't for some reason. So you have to go in the enable Dolby Audio in IQ. There's a button, it's very hidden, it's very tiny, and you switch between surround stereo on. and Dolby surround. And that surround is off. how you get surround with the HS65. Surround on. And the big guns, the HS80 RGB USB. If you're looking for the high-res audio, this is the way to go. Because it's powered by USB, it's very powerful. You don't have to worry about using an external amp or using like worrying about built-in audio in your computer. Everything is processed by the headset itself. So high-res audio, it's excellent. Lots of detail, lots of power on the low end as well. And it's not bloated. Everything feels nice and spacious. The, the sound stage is not too open, but it's not too closed. I feel like this would be a very comfortable headset for, for both competitive and single player stuff without any issues. Perhaps the only drawback with the HS80 RGB USB is it does not have the sound ID technology that is present on the HS65 surround, which is weird. Like this is a more premium headset and I find the sound ID is to be very nice as a feature. It's not available here. So in terms of EQ customization in IQ, you would have to do it manually based on what you hear and not letting sound ID configure it for you instead. All right, so some concluding thoughts. The new headsets are awesome. The microphones are excellent. The, the drivers are properly tuned without sounding muddy. There's just enough detail on the high end without being harsh, without introducing 
anything on the low end that doesn't sound out of place. And I find that the HS80 RGB to be like a very good premium point at $99. Be one of the best $99 headsets that is available on the market right now. And being USB also gives you that peace of mind that all the processing is done by IQ and the headset without needing to worry about additional amp or DAX. While the lower tiers, HS65 and 55, are separate enough from each other with a $20 premium, so you can kind of choose the budget route or slightly more upgraded in terms of build quality and the USB dongle, and they both sound the same, except for the USB dongle being, you know, a little bit more feature friendly. So guys, that concludes my review of the new stuff from Corsair. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next video.